We love you, Jesus. Jacob said last night, it's a cross. I'll never forget what he said. He said up here last night, he said, I looked at my life and I was sick and he said our bus had broke down and he said I'd have to go to bed every night listening to my wife cry over wanting a baby. He said, I got so discouraged. He said, I prayed and he said, God, this is so heavy. He said, this is so heavy. And he said, God came to the room where he was at and praying. And he said, God spoke to him and said, yes. He said, but my cross was heavier. He preached last night on whips, go to hell. But he said, real men take up a cross. That's right. Amen. It's a sacrificing way. That's right. He said, present your bodies. Why do we have such a hard time with that? God showed me years ago the body is what's going to burn in the fire because the body is what's been rebellious toward God. That's why in the next verse he said, mortify the deeds done in the body. The body is what the temple of the Holy Ghost is. I didn't preach this to the, amen, down to the Super Bowl crowd. I preached it to the church. Amen. Amen. Right, you feel rebellion and the Lord. to the house of the living God. We're in the day they call good evil. Amen. Second. Hey. Hallelujah. I wish somebody helped me share. Hey. They were young and they were free. Hey. There were twelve men who believed in a man who asked them to leave it all behind and follow me. So they set out on this journey, not knowing where he would lead. But soon the price would have to be
I sang about my book. Some men wandered in sheepskin. Some was naked, destitute of food, hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Wandered about, thrown in Dan's line. Some sown asunder. Yeah, you're talking about sacrifice. Right. Right. God bless you, Jason. Yeah, that's right. Preacher. But when deliverance comes, they said, No, God, we don't want to be delivered. Just let us die. What do you mean, preacher? There was another statement after they told God they didn't accept deliverance. They had hope of a better resurrection. Yeah. One of these old Mormons, if you don't believe what I'm preaching right, one of these Mormons, when God's rainbow angel comes, puts one foot on the land, I hope you're standing at my grave. I hope you're standing where they bury me. Come on, come on out. Come on, come on. 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 Come on.
church. Come on, man, God. Can we pray for him? Is that a good one? Let's give him a hand. How long have you been preaching? Six years now. Oh, God bless you. Praise the Lord. I know I'm not nothing, but I know one thing. I am a child of God, and I believe in the truth, and I want to carry my cross for Him. And the Lord has helped me through a whole lot this year, and I'm going to go around, and I'm going to just praise the Lord. That's good, Brother You obey God. Very Praise the Lord. Job chapter number one this morning. I feel this strange in my spirit this morning, but I've got a burden this morning and I want to obey, obey the Holy Ghost. I feel like there's people in here this morning that are struggling and I had a dream last night. I felt some things in my spirit. I told my wife when I was walking out, I seen some of those people that I seen in my dream last night and you're sitting in here this morning. I really feel like the Lord wants to help you this morning. Uh, I need the Holy Ghost. You pray for me this morning. Job chapter number one. We'll begin reading in verse number one. When you find your place, let's stand together. Job chapter number one, verse number one. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Let's skip down to verse number six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast that not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand so Satan went from the presence of the Lord you can sit down this morning that's all I feel like reading as I dream the Lord gave me this message about a week ago and I didn't know when I was going to preach it and I dreamed about this all night long last night and woke up started praying and uh, and uh, if the Lord will help me I want to preach on this morning I just don't know if I can make it and uh, the Lord put this in my spirit so you pray for me this morning and I need the Holy Ghost to help me. But in this passage here we have Job and I can imagine in verse number one it said he was a perfect and an upright man. I would say he had the armor on. He fought. He was a good man of God. And so the Lord allowed the devil to come against him and Satan come against him and it just kept on a fighting and a fighting. And uh, we, get to, we get to chapter uh, the end of verse number one. Job says, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return after all this has happened to Job. I lost his children, lost his cattle, lost his animals. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. So we see this after everything that happened to Job in chapter 1. We, after he is praising the Lord and still doing good brother Jason. We go into chapter number 2. Uh, Satan's come against him again. I uh, had a talk with the Lord and this time he brought sore balls upon Job and I can only imagine the torture that was on his body, the things that he was going through. He had a communication with his wife and his, Joe, his wife had rebuked his own, her own husband 
and I can imagine my wife coming unto me, Brother uh, brother Brandon, and, and saying those things to me to curse God and to die. But this time in chapter number three, Job curses his birth. The very day that he was born, he started out so good, uh, Brother Joe. And he started out so good, but this time he's cursing the day he was ever born. He's gotten to a place where he's tired. He's gotten to a place where he's weak. He's gotten to a place, Brother Matthew, where he barely can think he's going to be able to go on. And he just don't know if he's going to be able to make it. But I've read the end of this story and he made it. He repented and he made it after many things, after many conversations. And uh, as I was, I was thinking in my mind, my mind went to went to Paul and Silas when they were in jail. I, I, you know the story. They was there with that lady, uh, Lydia, I believe her name was. And they went down to the river to pray. And uh, there they were praying. And there was a woman that come down filled with a demon. And uh, Paul had looked at her and rebuke that demon in the name of Jesus. Paul on the on the road to Damascus, uh, you, he used to persecute Christians, used to kill them. He was on his very way to Damascus to do that. He was on his way to kill them. But on the way, there was a light that shone out of heaven and changed his entire life. Where he was going, God completely turned him around. But let's go back to Acts chapter 16. Here they are after he rebuked that demonic spirit. The people come unto him and they, they beat him. They rent their clothes. They beat them and they cast them into prison. And brother Jason, I can only imagine as, as I think in my fleshly mind, here I am, I just pretend I'm Paul. Here I am, I've preached the word. I've tried my best to do right. I've cast demons out in your name, but here I am in a prison cell. It's not looking too good for me, brother Jason. It's not looking too good at all. But as I can only imagine as Paul and Silas were there, he looked over at Silas and just in my mind, why is God for Forsaken us. That's how I probably would have taken it, Brother Jason. Here I am in jail. I've been beat almost to death. Why has God forsaken me? But that's not what Paul said. I can only imagine as maybe Paul said, Through me, me dangers, toils, and snares. As they started to sing, those chains started to fall. As they started to sing, there was an earthquake that had come and had released, and that man seen their life because of the storm that they had made through in their life. They didn't throw in the towel. They didn't give up. They kept on a going. And that, that, that jailer come unto Paul and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And the, they called upon the name of the Lord and that man was saved. And Sister Sarah, I'm going to go ahead and get you to come to the piano this morning. I feel like there's people in here this morning that this very week you've contemplated suicide in your own mind because of the trials, because of the storms you go through. It's almost been your entire life. Things that your mom or your dad may have done to you when you were little, you still bother, it still bothers you in your mind today. You don't feel like you can go on. The devil tells you that you are not anointed when you get up and preach. The devil tells you you are not anointed when you get up and sing. He fights you and fights you in your sleep. He fights you and shoots those arrows at you. Sister Sarah, if you'll play a song in the key of G. Bless you, Lord. I'm going to sing you a song here in a minute. I'm tell you a story and I'm done. Amen. I heard a story a while back. There was a, there was a missionary back, back in a big revival that they had. And uh, there was a missionary, I can't remember, I think it was India, went to South India. And uh, he converted a man there. Them people there, they hated God, didn't want anything to do there with God. They were headhunters. They hated Christians. And so that man had went over there called of God to be on the mission field. There was a man, he come upon a man, a wife, and two little children. Children. That man won them, them people to God, raised in the atmosphere of no God, raised in the atmosphere of people that would kill them for serving God. Well, that one missionary that left and that man and that woman and them two children still served God. God did many wonderful works according to the story that I read through that man, even though most of them people hated God there. The chief of the village found out one day. They went and brought that man in, in front of everybody, in front of all his archers and everything. He said, I'm a give you this chance right here to denounce God. That man uh, said all of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gave him this song. Can you give me a key, G? They had their arrows back fixed in the fire. He said, I, I have decided I 
excited this morning. down with that verse that man pulled back the arrow and killed his two little children said while them little children were right, were right there still twitching still quivering because they had just been killed that chief looked at him he said I'm going to give you another chance this time it's your wife he said this time though none go with me the arrows and shot his wife in cold blood with that arrow. There he was. He seen his two children there laying in cold blood. Seen his wife there as well. That chief looked at him. He said, I'm going to give you one last chance to denounce your faith. Holy Spirit got on him the last time and he started singing this verse. The world behind arrow shot and killed that man in cold blood one of the archers had witnessed the whole story and that's where it come from that chief after shooting all those people or his archer shooting all those people he realized brother joe that there really has to be a god for them to be able to stand up for the things that they stood for there really has to be a higher power I want to tell you this morning, that whole village, they got saved because of that man standing up. I want to tell you this morning, I feel like there's somebody in here struggling, struggling to even be able to stand this morning. You remember the message of the, the title of my message, I just don't know if I can make it. I'm here to tell you this morning, you can make it. You can make it this morning. Is every head, every eyes closed, every head bowed and eyes closed this morning.